Cooler Master is making monitors now and their entry-level $300 GM27-CF is their first one. Did they knock it out of the park? Well, we're gonna find out right here on Robotech. Before I do this, before I, I wanna caveat this review effectively. This is not going to be a super tech dive uh, type of review. That's not that's not what we do here. Like there are plenty of sites that do that, both YouTube and just websites. They do a really great job of talking about like gray to gray and and basically how this stacks up to about five thousand other different monitors. What I really want you to know is if you're thinking about buying this monitor, whether it's going to be good, whether it's going to be bad, and what it's good at and what it may struggle with, right? And in the end, simplify the super marketing terms that sometimes we see on these kind of monitors and make it so anybody really understands, hey, what am I getting when I'm spending my $300 on this GM27-CF? Taking all of that into account, let's talk about the overview of just the features right now. So here is the GM27-CF at a high level. First and foremost, the curve. This is a 1500R curve. Now, remember we just did our, G, our Odyssey G7 review, that was 1800, and you've seen a lot of standard curves that are more around 1000R. Now when I say 1000R, 1500R, 1800R, the, more, the higher the number, the more curvature there is to the monitor. 1800R being very, very curved, 1500 being pretty curved, and 1000 being slightly curved. So this is 1500R, and you know what, it's funny, I, Think about this, like that just means like the curve is slight and more noticeable, but pretty dang awesome. We'll talk about what I thought about that a little later on. The resolution on this is 1920 by 1080 or 1080p or full HD, as you, you call it. This isn't a 1440p, this isn't a 4K. This is that nice, like pretty well sweet spotted 1920 by 1080, which a lot of PCs, both low end and high end, can really kind of push and do the best of the best when you talk about these kind of monitors. So this will basically work for your low end all the way up to your high end. This thing has 165 hertz refresh rate, but you can do 60, 120, or even 200 hertz. That's right, you do have the ability to overdrive this to 200 hertz, which means uh, very similar to that conversation I was just having a little bit earlier, right? Like you can do a low end machine on this all the way up to a super high end and doing 200 hertz. This thing has a super, super packed on-screen display. And that means that there is a ton of features and a lot of things to cover when we talk about the on-screen display. Let's start kind of at the top level. You've got your input source, which lets you do DisplayPort. You've got your HDMI 1.4 and you've got HDMI 2.0. You've got your brightness and contrast, which lets you do your brightness, your contrast, and then you can do what's called dynamic contrast, uh, which is DCR. We'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the end of like all of these little specs. You've got your color settings, which lets you do things like change your gamma, change your picture settings, like you can do gamer mode or movie mode, etc. You can change your color temperature. This is where you get low blue light if you want to tweak that, and I'll get into that a little bit later. You've got your picture quality settings, which is things like sharpness, whether you can do your response time um, and override that, um, or your overdrive, um, and your super resolution, as well as your dynamic luminance control. Uh, you've got your display, which lets you choose whether it's going to do widescreen or whether you're gonna do like a normal in terms of the um, mode um, and transparency. It's got multi-window, which is actually pretty cool, which allows you to have multiple inputs plugged in. You can do things like change the size of your picture-in-picture, -picture. you can move where the picture-in-picture -picture is, and even change things like transparency or the audio source. Um, it's got audio, which lets you do things like change your mute, change your volume, um, even change like a little bit like we talked about before, which audio multi-window you're getting access to. Um, and then finally, you've got your general on-screen display stuff, um, which is doing things like what's the transparency for the, the, uh, the on-screen menu, um, what's the horizontal and vertical position, so when you're playing around with a menu, you can make it more transparent or more readable, etc. There is this other category, and that's where you can turn on FreeSync, because this, does, this monitor does support FreeSync. Now, I want to give a word and a warning, because I'm not going to talk about this in the review, but this is something that I, I like to caveat, or sorry, not caveat, but frame, <laughs> It's funny I said it. Frame every monitor uh, in a really neat way um, to kind of understand things. Like so, things like dynamic control, contrast ratio, super resolution, and dynamic luminance control are all options that realistically they're great marketing terms, but they really just should be turned off because every time you actually use something like that, it increases the input lag. So not only if you are a good gamer, you look like a terrible gamer, and because you're on stream and you're like, I'm pushing a button and it's taking like 30 seconds. Not really, but 30 seconds for me to update and like what's wrong with my thing and then you throw the monitor and your mom gets mad or your dad gets mad or your wife gets mad and suddenly you're sleeping on the couch and you don't know why and there's just there's a lot of fear and anger and 
This is hard. I do want to talk about this. This is a VA panel. Um, and when we say VA, um, I want to tell you about where that sits in the kind of the three main different kind of panels there are. There's VA, which stands for vertical alignment. Um, and this is a type of LED panel technology. Surprise, surprise. Um, and they're characterized as having like the best contrast and image depth uh, versus IPS and TN. Now a TN is called the twisted pneumatic, um, and this is a type of LCD that is characterized as being the fastest and cheapest among the other main types of displays. And then finally, you've got IPS, which stands for in-plane switching, and those are characterized as having the best color and viewing angles among the other main types of displays. So this is, again, VA, which means vertical alignment, and they're really known for their contrast ratio, which looks incredible on this monitor, and their image depth. Now this thing has three millisecond response time. We'll talk a little bit later about how that works from a performance standpoint, but that's their, their, um, that's their claim. When they talk about three, three millisecond response time, that's basically the average time it takes from a, for a pixel to go from gray to gray average, and that's how fast a monitor changes colors. And so like the faster or slower, you'll see things like ghosting, etc. So a faster response time is actually better. Um, this supports free seat premium. So what is FreeSync Premium? FreeSync pre Premium, and there's Premium, there's just FreeSync, and then there's Premium Plus. Um, that means it's at least 120 hertz refresh rate. Um, it supports low frame rate compensation. So what is low frame rate compensation? That means that it, you don't have to worry about a minimum refresh rate in your monitor. So if, like say for instance, you're running at 13 frames per second, regardless, the monitor will compensate and make sure that it stays in sync. This is actually pretty awesome technology and it's something that really only comes with FreeSync Premium and something you should always try and get a FreeSync Premium. Also, unofficially, unofficially, if you know what that means, unofficially, it also supports G-Sync. And that just means it's not on the G-Sync supported list, but in our test, G-Sync did work, and that's awesome. So, bonus, yay! I don't know where to go with this, I'm just going to move my hands a lot. There we go. Um, this also has a really cool thing called low blue light mode. And look at it, I'm gonna, we're, let's go into Dr. Roby mode here. So low loop blue light mode is an easy thing to turn on and off. What it is, is like, there's a, just a single button uh, on the uh, front panel. And what you do is you can basically turn it on and it goes to 50% and it removes some of the harmful blue light that comes from a monitor. Now, the fact that blue light penetrates all the way to the retina or like that inner lining in your back of your eye, I'd point at it, but then I'd go blind. So let's not do that, even though Casey would love that. It's important because laboratory studies have shown that too much exposure to blue light can uh, damage light sensitive cells in the retina. Um, so these cause changes that resemble what's called macular degeneration, which can lead to permanent visual loss. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna happen. There's still some studies that need to go, but if you are concerned about those things, awesome, Cooler Master thought of that and added that to the monitor. So bonus there, and we're gonna do the gun sounds. <laughs> bonus, so going from there. Inputs, I talked about this a little bit earlier. It's got HDMI 2.0, HDMI 1.4, it's got DisplayPort, and it's also got a headphone jack, so you can look super awesome with your super cool Walkman. Who remembers the Walkman? Do you, do you know, what? A, do you, you ever use a Walkman? No. <laughs> I feel old, I feel so old. But you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, you saw that, right? No, okay, never mind. Casey's, <laughs> Casey's not allowed to work here anymore. Just go home. And then finally, I wanna talk a little bit about the last thing that I wanted to kind of cover overall is that just kind of talking about the looks of this monitor. It's very subtle, um, which I really actually appreciated. Um, it's only got a small little uh, purple Cooler Master symbol at the front. It's got 11 millimeter uh, edge around the bevel with 17 millimeters at the bottom. So it's pretty thin in terms of bevel bezels. Um, it's, uh, it's got a nice, much more friendly desk size stand. I know we talked about the Odyssey G7, but I'll be honest, like that thing, you need like monster desk and I'm working on monster desk and you'll check out the video on that alien, but it was pretty massive. This one, nice. You don't need a lot of room for basically putting it on your desk. Um, the LEDs in the back are nice, um, which I thought was pretty cool. They're nice and subtle. It's got that nice triangle pattern. Again, very Destiny-esque, maybe very Star Wars-esque, which look cool. The only thing I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan is it's got like a big glaring Cooler Master logo. Some people are into that, but for the most part, like I kind of like it when companies are a little bit more subtle and it's just like a plain black plastic, which I think looks a little bit better. The only other gripe I had from a look standpoint was that it's very simplistic from the cable management standpoint. Honestly, there is no thing as cable management. There's nothing to help hide or control cables, which I thought was kind of which I thought was kind of weird. There are other monitors, like for instance, the new monitor from Gigabyte, which is also a 27 inch, which is very very similar in terms of price, but has things like cable management, which I thought was kind of a, a sore omission. But that's a light thing to hit on, given all of the other things that this monitor does so right. 
So that's it. That's an overview of all of the different, different pieces that we're talking about in here. That's everything that kind of comes with it. Now let's talk about our review. And here, when we talk about our reviews, really kind of at a top level, we're going to tell you what it's good at, yay, what it's bad at, no. And uh, as a gamer, is this a monitor you should get when you spend 300 bucks? What this review is not, and again, I just I gotta hit on this because sometimes there's so many times, like no matter how many times I talk about this, then people go and watch our, our reviews and they're like, hey, you didn't tear apart the monitor and rebuild it and add capacitors and throw some tech stuff in there and you didn't use the 37 technical jargon words that you have to do on your checklist like panel and IPS and cookies. Uh, that actually wasn't one of them. I'm just making fun of you. Uh, the point being is that this is not going to do stuff. Like, there's people like Tom's Hardware or even there's some very technical stuff even on Cooler Master's site for the GM27-CF which really do that and really break it down across the whole level. I really just want to give you a basic, basic review that takes all of that stuff and at a high level tells you, yeah, you should get this or no, you shouldn't. Here's a spoiler. You should probably pick up this monitor if you're looking at it because it's actually pretty awesome. Um, when I talk about what I use when I do review the monitor, what I do is I play a myriad of games. In this one, we played Flight Sim 2020, we played Forza Horizon 7, we played Alien Isolation, Gears of War Tactics, Halo 3, um, we played um, uh, Hellblade, um, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of really, really great games. And the main reason I play all these different games is I check things in bright, check things in dark, check things in fast, check things in slow, right? All of the kind of games that all of you may be interested in to kind of find out, hey, is this something that I actually care about? I also did some productivity stuff because sometimes people use monitors for things other than gaming. That's right, there are those of us who have jobs and sometimes we'll do things like Excel or Outlook like a boss or what other, th Photoshop, Premiere. And we do all those things just to make sure that they work. We do some photo editing because Man, with a face like this, you gotta do a lot of editing to make things look better, and so we have people who use that stuff. And then finally, we watched movies and content, not just my own, I promise. Yes, I love it, it's so awesome, but at the same time, we ought to watch some, some Jay's Two Cents and a little Linus and some movies, and you know, we, we wanna know how's it gonna do when you're doing stuff like that. And then finally, we do some hardware testing. We do test rate of gray, we basically test millisecond response, we test input lag, all those sort of things. We do that just so at a high level we can at least talk about that from an educated standpoint. We've had the panel for about a month and the review was about 130 hours in terms of total time. So that's what it is. So let's kick off the review. I want to start with a story because I think this is important and this kind of, this kind of sums up this monitor at a high level. So I had my folks over we were working on, we were working on taxes, which was not fun, but while I was doing that, my, we, were, we were getting stuff inputted in, I was continuing to work on this review. And I was playing Forza Horizon 7 and then I got into Flight Sim and my dad was like, holy crap, that monitor makes these games look fantastic. And at its core, that is the thing. I was blown away at how dang good for 300 bucks and I've played with monitors that are 1080p that are the six, $700 all the way down to the 200 to $250. And I was impressed with how good these games rock because this does have a 3000 to one contrast ratio. And because of that, these games look really good. When I look at the cost of this panel versus other panels, specifically from a performance standpoint, we're doing really good. Like the Gigabyte G27F, which is a very similar time. I think this monitor actually does better and still looks good and still has the same amount in terms of um, the amount of uh, additions it has via their on-screen displays. I mean, even when you compare it to like games, uh, monitors that are more expensive, like for instance, the Odyssey G7, which you're paying six, $700 for a 1440p 32 inch there. And from an on-screen display standpoint, this thing does actually a bit more. And you know, the little things like blue light and stuff like that actually end up being pretty cool. Um, when I caught, when I did have some minor gripes, I talked about those a little bit later, like for instance, the, the fact that it doesn't have like cable management and there's some, there's some visual things that I not, I, I have issues with. The other thing too, is there's some finickiness specifically with the controls for the on-screen display. Like, man, it was funny. We were, we were basically shooting a B-roll for this and he was watching me struggle, even though this thing has a legend on it with basically the, how the on-screen display. And I think that there are things with like the, using the little nipples. Yes, I said nipples. Uh, using the little nibbles or nubs that um, you control on the Auris and all those other things that are, are just better input mechanisms and just easier to basically grok uh, versus the way that this does, specifically with the execute and the go back functions that are in the menu. But outside of that, everything else, very, very happy with. Now let's talk a little bit about the curve because 
when you think about 1800 or 1500 or 1000 R, people, the question I always get, and you know, I've actually had a couple people I've recommended this monitor to already, and they're like, well, what is, like, is the curve distracting? And it's funny, because I, before this, I had finished the review for the 1800 R Odyssey G7. And the thing that I will say is that I didn't know how drastic that 1800 R curve was until I went back to something like the Cooler Master. And I just think the 1500 R is like that nice sweet spot, though I really enjoy the 1800 R and it's actually one of my primary monitors, that 1500 R, it just blends better. It's just enough to get on your peripheral, which is great um, without being too distracting and less of an issue when you're doing productivity, which is also a nice little added bonus. Um, when we talk about the monitor performance, this monitor boasts a 3000 to one contrast ratio, we did our testing, it actually tested a little bit higher, um, which is awesome for a VA Samsung panel, which is what they actually have in this. Like again, sometimes like memory, etc., they do use panel technology from other companies and then they rebrand it. They chose a really great VA panel from Samsung. And you know, when you think about QLED and the stuff that's coming out of them, your contrast ratio is something that they boast and it really comes across with this particular monitor. It's got a five millisecond average is what we tested at 165 Hertz when we talk about our are, um, and that's with using overdrive. So I know it boasted three milliseconds, but again, everybody tests um, their uh, millisecond response time differently. Ours was getting close to four, anywhere between 4.75 all the way up to 5.06 or something like that, um, and which was great for a VA panel. Um, viewing angles are good, uh, which I mean, honestly, it's 27 inches, but from the top aside, you see some slight discoloring as you're moving from the top or the bottom, but Dude, why are you why are you looking at something like that from 27 inches? I mean, I'm gonna tell you, but I don't know who's like sitting there sharing it. Like that's like super weird. Maybe you live in like one of those tiny houses and you're like, oh, I want to play games too. So you're like you're sitting from the side, like trying to, I don't know. If you care, there's the info. It seems like something we always throw in this thing, but I want to make sure I tell you. It's got minimal screen grow. When I talk minimal screen grow, it just doesn't grow. Just so you know, the screen doesn't so magically grow. It's minimal. If you wait over a year, it might grow to 28 inches. That's not a thing, <laughs> just kidding. I meant to say minimal screen glow. When I talk about that, when you think about the edges of the screen, which is where a lot of the light comes in there, if you turn it to all black, which you're gonna see a picture of here, even on the brightest settings, the edges are not overly white. And that's the, the reason that you talk about, when you talk about gray to gray, and where a lot of times when we talk about our millisecond response, it's along the edges, specifically on a VA panel, where it takes the longest amount of time to go from one to the other. And that's because of this screen glow. This monitor does a dang good job, even at its brightest setting, to keep that in a minimal, which means it's not distracting. And when you even play dark games like Alien Isolation or Hellblade, those games looked great and did not have that kind of bleed. Awesome there, that is a big thumbs up for me. Um, response time obviously degrades as you go slower, so from 165 hertz to 120 to 60, obviously you get a slower response time. This thing really sings at 165 hertz. I talked a little bit about that 200 megahertz um, overdrive, which you cannot set unless you do it outside using Windows. Um, then you can actually get 200 megahertz. I don't, I, I, I think there's a reason that they did this because honestly, it's not that great. Um, 200 frames per second on 1080p is actually really hard to get even with a 2080 Ti. And frankly, the millisecond response slows down. It's just not perfect. In some cases, like we actually saw things where we were seeing flickering um, and it, it actually didn't work on certain PCs. So again, you have the option, it's not perfect. It's probably why they don't advertise it all that much. Really at 165 Hertz is that nice sweet spot for this. Breaking it just down simply, for $299, this monitor really just kind of does everything really well. Minor gripes, minor gripes, specifically on things, but for the most part, honestly, pretty dang cool. I wanna talk about ideal settings. Ideal settings is something that pretty much everybody's doing like hardware unboxed. A lot of those guys, I wanna do the same thing. It feels like it's something useful. I was like, hey, is this something that I should add? I should add this to my review. So ideal settings, uh, set response time um, in uh, for overdrive to fastest. Uh, this is in the performance section. Uh, set your gamut at 2.0. Uh, turn on FreeSync, that's kind of a given. Leave all the other defaults the same. Do not touch them because it's not worth the increased input lag. You don't wanna look like a noob. You don't wanna play games like Brian does. But y'all don't say that. Actually, it's not true. Brian's pretty good. And he's probably going to beat me later. And this may be the last video I ever make. But if not, look forward to more. Um, but anyway, leave all the defaults the same. Um, and, and specifically things like DCR, uh, any of the other big marketing things, just don't touch them. Uh, the one thing I will say, if you want to adjust things like brightness or color or all those, those things are all sometimes a personal choice. Really out of the box, the only thing I would worry about is the gamma, changing it from 2.2 down to 2.0. 
So now we've gone through this great 15 to 20 minute, I don't know when this is all edited, how long this is gonna be, but I wanna kind of add this section at the very end to wrap it all up. I've used a lot of language, a lot of verbiage, a lot of words. Shakespeare is quivering in his grave, just given the, the, the verbal spew that I have said throughout this entire video. I mean, it's just, it's impressive and I get it. But let's, let's just break it down simply. One, pros, performance for cost. You get a lot for 299 bucks and it looks great. For gaming, this is great for almost all gaming experiences. From alien isolation all the way up to your frames per second, this thing does fantastic for all games. It supports FreeSync, and unofficially it supports G-Sync, so that's also a great bonus. VA response at 165 hertz with overdrive is awesome. And for FPS games, we're talking about being on par with most competitive monitors, which is awesome. So Zowie, BenQ, all those things, this could be a competitive. And if you're looking to get into competitive gaming, this is actually not a bad monitor to try that with. It looks really great out of the box, which means even though you could modify the gamma, you're not really gonna be hurting yourself, which is one something we always like to think about for customers. Most people turn this thing on and you know how they plug it in is how they're gonna use it. And out of the box, this thing really sings. Cons, I know this is a weird thing, but it doesn't have any sRGB emulation mode. So if you're gonna do anything that's like color correcting, like if you're gonna go in there and make sure that I don't look extra green, or you really wanna make some really great fan photos of me, and you wanna make sure they're super accurate, this is maybe not the monitor for you because you wanna get your color absolutely right. My beard is like a burnt orange or burnt auburn, and if you don't nail that, it just throws my whole coloration on. Um, 200 megahertz overdrive, eh. Not really anything to write home, write home about. The panel kind of struggles with it. I know it's not really an official thing, but I figured it was worth basically saying from a con standpoint. The stand is pretty limited. There's no ability to hide, like there's no ability to basically hide cables, all that stuff. I mean, for the most part, it's got that big white glaring uh, Cooler Master logo. If that's not a big deal to you, it's still, it, I mean, it's not gonna keep me from buying it, but I still have to throw it in as con. And then finally, though great for a VA panel, it still struggles with VA things. The, like for instance, the millisecond response time along the edge. I mean, this is again, pretty mediocre, um, but still worth mentioning. Is it great for games? Yes. Is it great for all games? Yes. Is it good for productivity? Yeah, and I even the curve doesn't seem to bother me. And then finally, is it great for photo editing, video editing? Yes, in some regards, as long as you don't have to really care about uh, color correction. And then finally, if you're gonna watch movies or if this is gonna be your dorm room thing, is it gonna work well for that? Yeah, and it's gonna look good and you're actually gonna be super happy with it. So that's it. That's closing it all out, that is my review. Questions, was this a helpful review? Did I do better? I took all of the feedback you've given me from the other two monitor reviews you've done and input it into this. Again, we're always trying to get better here on Robitech, would love to know your thoughts on that. Are you excited about this monitor? And tell me why. Um, is there anything that we didn't cover in the review that you'd like us to add? Um, how much does hiding cables matter to you? I mean, for me, it was a kind of a big deal. I, I am currently in the middle of doing a remodel for our big game room that we're gonna be game streaming, and so I'd love to know what you think. And then finally, when it comes to this monitor and the looks, what do you think? Like, overall, I talked a little bit about the things that irked me. Would love to know if anything irks you or if you're pretty much perfectly happy. Now, while you're down there, make sure that you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so that we get a notification each and every time that you we make a new video. Also, come hang out with us every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, starting at 6.30 for our live show right here on YouTube. Or you can hang out with us over on Twitch, where it's, we're also streaming there over at twitch.tv slash Robitech. Also, we have an amazing, amazing audience of folks who hang out with us on Discord that help things with like build questions, you have tech support questions, you wanna show off your rig, you wanna talk about cats, maybe eat some Mexican food, you know, all those sort of things are things you can do on Discord. You can't eat the Mexican food in Discord, but you can talk about the Mexican food that you're eating in Discord. So it's almost as good. It's like ASMR, but for typing. Also, do not forget, follow me on socials, Instagram, TikTok. That's right, I'm hanging out with the kids. We're doing the dances. We're working on the tea swizzle stuff. Also, facebook.com slash Robitech, because even your parents totally dig Robitech. Anyway, guys, have a great time. Hope you enjoyed the monitor. Maybe go out and pick one out. All the links for all that stuff is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.